All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, we have a, a guest that I'm sure nobody that listens or watches this show regularly is familiar with. A brand new guest, never had him on before. Um, but we need to welcome uh, Connor Kelly to the show for the very first time ever. Welcome, <laughs> Connor. What's up, guys? I just want to say uh, I'm glad we're regressing after last week when you had a woman on. Now it's like, oh God, let's bring it. Let's bring back a a white bearded guy. Yeah. <laughs> and this feels like it's like slipping into like a nice warm sweater, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is more what we're used to, right? Like. Uh. And did you notice that like Kelly looked like she like had like put makeup on and gotten all fancy? I and put a hat on. You look like you stink right now. Like, <laughs> like you look like you smell bad. Greg Geraldo to Gilbert Godfrey. You look like you smell like pee. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Connor, welcome back to the show, dude. And you're in your you're like pushing through the fact that you are ill right now. You are under the weather. I, I'm co I'm coming off the tail end of it, so I do apologize if I clear my throat. I'm gonna try not to, um, but uh, yeah, I sound worse than I feel. So we we should be good. I actually uh, did a little calibration on my palate earlier with some regular Maker's Mark, uh, just kind of see where it was at if anything was hitting weird. And um, the the bitterness is really pronounced. So I don't. I mean, I don't think it. Uh, this whiskey is gonna taste like you know Fernet Branca or something, but i i think i'm pretty much up to spite up to speed yeah okay well good glad to hear that uh because tonight we are drinking the product that kelly makes we're drinking some asbury park small batch number three and she has told me the mash bill for this particular bottle a few times um but i don't remember it i can't remember whatsoever I know that this is their original, like they distilled all this, they aged all of this. Um, all of the grains come from New Jersey. I know that they use reverse osmosis water because New Jersey water is terrible. So they would rather have just clear, clean 7.0 pH water as opposed to um, the, uh, the just the New York water because... That would be better. Um, and now I've got some questions in my brain about that for later on for you, for you, Connor, Connor, okay. um, about the, you know, the, the water specifically. But uh, this is 92 proof um, comes from Asbury Park Distilling in Asbury Park, New Jersey, home of the world famous Stone Pony. Um, Hour and 10 minutes from Pine Barrens hour and 10 minutes from pine barrens that's that's correct uh bruce springsteen if you don't know like stone pony bruce spring springsteen was founded in asbury park bon jovi asbury park stone pony Billy, yeah Billy all, all the people probably... singing about getting out of new jersey <laughs> yeah yeah uh bruce springsteen did an album called live from the stone pony i think it was anyway it's oh, a really cool. cool uh music venue uh fun place still to open yo oh, yeah oh I god yes. it's a, it's still a huge big deal i actually went and saw um the dave matthews band back in like 2002 when they were huge um it's like a, like i said it's like a warm sweater we're talking about dave matthews band just <laughs> bunch of bearded guys here. but it was cool but it was cool because it was like a like a really small venue to see dave matthews band like then the night before he was going to be uh doing a concert at madison or like a saturday friday saturday sunday sold out show at madison square garden and i got to see him in like a group of 100 people that was kind of cool so anyway he wakes so, up in the morning <laughs> Before we do anything else, we gotta we gotta get a label rating here, Stephen. What do you think of this? Yeah, and I will say shout out to uh, Dave Matthews Band for dumping their shit all over Chicago <laughs> and the people of Chicago. Um, <laughs> and then the Asbury Park uh, label, I think it's a great looking label, especially for how small of a distillery they are. Um, mm. I'm not gonna take that into effect with the label. I just want to think that's worth mentioning. That's cool because we kind of saw with Spirits of French Lick early on their label game. You know, 
as Alan Bishop even said, they're still kind of catching up, I would say, to the point that they're, you know, looking more professional, looking more complete. Whereas I think Asbury Park has, with their level of uh, operation, I would say at this point, um, to have such a finished looking product label wise, I think is a pretty good testament. Now, I don't think it's the best label of all time, but I think it has a lot of cool elements. I especially like the Asbury Park lettering. I love how that looks. It's very distinct and unique. It almost looks like a carnival or something. Um, I don't know exactly where that comes from. Maybe there's like a like the city's like overall, you know, aesthetic or whatever. They put that on a bunch of signs or something. But it fits in really well. It looks nice with the grain. And uh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, I think. Um, I think it's a really solid bottle. And I'd be curious, you know, what else they come out with. To me, it almost looks like uh, like the Starbucks mermaid or whatever in the middle. Uh, it's almost yeah. like the Starbucks bourbon or something. Um, so I think it looks really cool. All right. Seven. I can't argue with that. And yeah, I think it's a solid label too. Um, there was something I wanted to throw out. Oh, okay. So this, uh, the small batch, this particular one is batch three and it has been aged minimum of two years. Um, but I know that they use smaller barrels. I don't, I know it's not 53 gallon barrels. I don't know what size I thought she they said are. 30. Did she? Is she there? said thirty. Okay. Is there... I was I, I was happy to hear that because thirty is like to me that's like the smallest that I would use that I don't feel compromises the uh, the aging of the whiskey. Okay. Very cool. Um, just a few other notes about this. Um, I sent out a bunch of blinds to people on TikTok, and one of the blinds, well. I sent this to two people. One was a four ounce pour, no, a two ounce pour. Uh, one was a two ounce vial to one person. And then to a different person, I sent one ounce of this and one ounce of E.H. Taylor small batch. And this kicked the shit out of E.H. Taylor small batch. Wow. Yes, I agree with that sentiment. And it did not surprise me. There was a reason I put those two against each other. Um, so if you, if you're in the Asbury park, New Jersey area, see if you can grab it or you can purchase it online. Yeah. Mash and Yeah. So, yep. So well, what do you say? We drink it. Yeah. Here, let's give it a shot. Cheers. Slow trip. <laughs> I think it's got a killer nose. Yeah. It's, it's a Spicy. very unique nose. Yeah, you like you get enough of the alcohol to know it's whiskey, but but it's got some like spicy notes to it, some citrus notes to the nose. A lot of sourdough. Yeah, I can get that. It almost smells like a scotch. To me at least. Thank you for defending that answer. <laughs> 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 can't I don't tell know, you you're wrong hear that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well the palate is not really like the nose Mm-mm. it's not the taste i expected from this one that's interesting you you don't remember what the mash bill is i i don't uh i think it was 70% corn. It may have just been 70, 20, 10. And I don't know. I can find, I can figure it out. It's got a beautiful color too, by the way. It's not like overly uh, dark red or anything. It's this nice light amber. I hear when people describe wine this way, but it's almost like thick like leathery in a way like like it's viscous it's yeah it's just yeah very like thick it feels like it if that makes any sense to you but it's like it lingers it lingers yeah yeah what's your good things bad things i I think it's got a great finish personally i think it's a great finish it is the reason why you paired it with the 
Elijah or the not the Elijah Craig, but the uh, E.H. Taylor small batch? Is it because it's uh, got that blueberry vanilla? Yes, it? correct. Yeah. That's what I'm smelling. Because I was like, there's is- some dark fruit that I can't describe because it wasn't red fruit and it's not grapes like Concord grape. It's it's something. That is exactly correct. The sweetness on this is a very different type of a sweet flavor than E.H. Taylor. Um, I get way more honey from this, whereas with E.H. Taylor, I get more caramel. Excuse me. Um, Yeah, so on this, I get a lot more of a honey sweetness as opposed to a caramel sweetness, but it's to me it's got like a deep honey flavor as opposed to like like a light honey flavor so the sweetness isn't really comparable but i think that there's enough notes that were similar to where i was like this this is a pretty good comparison right here like there there's enough similarities that i thought i would get a good natural response whereas if i paired let's instead of asbury park let's say eh taylor small batch versus um wild turkey right like those are going to be two totally different profiles so now you're figuring out which profile somebody likes better not which whiskey they prefer so yeah yeah anyway this you get is... that deep that deep honey too for sure this is unlike any bourbon I've ever had. I can't think of anything that this reminds me of. So I also gave a sample of this bottle. So uh, Kelly and I did a trade. I sent her a bottle of Stumpies for her to send me this bottle. We did a one for one trade uh, just to experience local craft distilleries versus each other. And um, of this bottle, 90% of it has gone to other people because like i love it but it's also one of those whiskeys that i'm like okay you need to taste this right like this is a really interesting one and two ounces of it went to a store owner and i didn't tell him anything about it except for hey this is a local craft distillery out of new jersey you cannot get it like you won't be able to but i want to hear your hear your thoughts on it and didn't even tell him like the name of the distillery he contacted me that later that day because we didn't sip it in front of you like with each other he was just like okay you've got to tell me more about this distillery and i was like all right happy to nice so 62.5 percent yellow dent corn uh 12.5 percent malted barley she didn't specify what level of of malt uh, it's um, probably just a crystal malt if they didn't specify yeah she didn't she didn't say like which one? Uh, so that leaves <coughs> 20, uh, 25% rye. 25% rye? So 62.5 plus 12.5 Connor. is 75. No, 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 no. The, ma- the math is throwing me off, but the, yeah. like, for that's this a lot of rye. 25% rye, this is amazing. Yep. I yep. don't get like the traditional high rye. I, I make high rye bourbon. So this yeah. doesn't taste like mm-hmm. a high rye bourbon to me. Yeah. I'd be very curious what type of rye they use. What what species? Uh, she said it's 100% Jersey grain. So it's got to be a Jersey rye. And so it's not going to be like, I don't know the different strains, but like I know the Canadian rye and European rye tends to be sweeter, right? Well, it, it, I'm like super novice at this, but like, um, for example, uh, Old Potrero in San yeah. Francisco, uh, they use, uh, ooh, no, I'm speaking out of turn. They use malted, right? But uh, Leopold Bros, they're really famous for using a Brutzi rye. Uh, that's the type of rye they, they prefer. Uh, it's similar to how in the wine industry, how you have Cabernet Sauvignon grapes or Pinot Noir grapes and uh so it'll still be rye but you have different flavors between different breeds uh the distillery most famous for in my experience uh, is far north spirits in minnesota uh because they grow it all themselves and so they have bottlings of just specific grains really a hundred percent of yeah 
Pacific Greens. Oh, that's cool. It's it's super, super cool. Uh, I'd love to visit their operation. They're way out in the middle of nowhere. Halleck, Minnesota. It's like four hours from Canada, eight hours. From, sorry, four miles from Canada, eight miles from North Dakota. It is right up in the corner. Okay. Hmm. So that's the mash bill. Um, I can't, I don't know any additional specifics. I know like Kelly would tell you exactly what type of rye if you gave her like, if yeah. You her. Um, now her boss, Bill, she's told me his <laughs> name. Yeah, she Remember messed it up on the episode too. <laughs> yeah. Whatever his name is. Um, he's a graduate of, uh, university over in scotland uh, harriet watt harriet watt thank you um which like that's a big fucking deal right connor yeah it, to me to me uh that is like our phd program because technically when you graduate from there uh because uh my boss's boss uh graduated from there uh and i believe uh brendan coyle the master of still for high west uh he also graduated Harriet Watt. Um, you're a master in brewing and distilling. Um, and so the only things that come close to it is like Moonshine University in Kentucky or Tennessee, which is a legit thing, even though the name sounds a little goofy. They're pretty legit too, but Harriet Watt's a big deal. Okay. I'm never going there, but uh, <laughs> unless someone else wants to pay for it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> a lot of folks, especially in Kentucky, talk about being on the slab that limestone mm -hmm. water how that's so important and i brought up okay but doesn't most of the calcium and all of the nutrients from the limestone water doesn't that get left behind during the distillation process and like and if that limestone water has any impact on the whiskey it's once you've proofed it down Right, yep. because now you're using the limestone water and the distillation is done. So so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, there are a few different areas where the water quality matters. Um, when, we're, when we're talking about Kentucky, if they take water straight from the ground and proof their spirit down with it, I would be concerned because depending on what your TDS, your total dissolved solids are, that could cause some cloudiness in the bottle uh, later down the line, or you could see sediment at the bottom of the bottle. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I would imagine that they use an RO uh, filter to purify the water, or at the very least a carbon filter before that water touches the spirit and goes into bottle. This is at the very end, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, I bet that water goes pretty much raw and untreated uh, into the fermenters because mm -hmm. uh, then you're questioning about what effect the calcium or, or whatever's in the water has an effect on the fermentation. It could lower the pH. Sorry, it could raise the pH a little bit, could affect your fermentation a bit. Um, but what I've always held to as an outsider, I'm not in Kentucky. I've never been east of Montana. Uh, not really, at least the airports don't count. Uh, is that the the real benefit to being on the limestone slab is the limestone taking the iron out of the water. Because whenever I drink Yingling beer, I taste iron. It reminds me of being punched in the mouth and tasting blood. And I would think it's because they're not near a limestone uh, aquifer. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more anti iron than pro limestone. But oh. again, I'm not a Kentuckian, so I can't really speak with any certainty on the matter. But the big bourbon people, the big bourbon places probably use filtered water on their end product because there's too much at stake for them to not. Yeah. Let's, uh, you ready to score it, Steven? Yep. Go for it, bro. I'm going to give Starts it. Off. An eight point seven. Oh Ooh. shit! I think it. You know what? That's it. higher than. That's higher money. than Midwinter's Night's Dream. That's true. Yeah, I, I. Well, I personally, I would drink it on. I know you said you didn't care as much about this at the time, Dan, and you. 
again, you equated it partially to price, but I would drink this on way more occasions than I would mm-hmm. drink Midwinter Night's Dram. I love Midwinter Night's Dram for what it is, but um, it's just a more seasonal thing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this, and there's no reason to compare it. Otherwise, you, you were just saying that. But yeah. so, so I'll drop that there. But I think that it's just really solid. I think that it has a really interesting nose. It has, um, mm-hmm. I guess, like the most underwhelming part is kind of like the front of the palate. But even that is not bad. It's just not... It's just not the most notable thing. The nose and the finish are the two most notable things. I love the way it hangs around with you, but it doesn't hang around with you in such like a, it's not a burn kind of like hug uh, finish. It's just a very flavorful mouthfeel type finish. And I think it's all super pleasant. The like blueberry vanilla uh, notes are really prevalent and nice. And I think that it's it's a killer value given my rating. I just want to highlight that I think it's a killer value at this price point. And I really didn't know what to expect, especially with the nose, because I could easily see myself, even though I think it's a good nose, I could have easily seen myself saying like, this is a divisive flavor to it. But I really think that even if you smell this guy and you think it's not for you, if you drink it, I really think, Dan likes to say this all the time, but I'll borrow the the saying, I can't see anybody drinking this and just straight up not liking it. I think that it's a lot of the notes people like and look for and find to be uh, really desirable and more harder to get stuff. So yeah, that's my rating, 8.7. I think that's a solid rating and a really solid justification. And if nobody minds, I'd like to go second, if I may. By all means. So I, I wanna say I agree with pretty much everything that Steven said but I'm going to rate it a full point lower, a 7.7, okay? Which is still a really, re- on our show, a 7.7 7 is still a really fucking good score, right? Like, that's upper echelons already. My reason for knocking it just a little bit is that I don't know that, for, for me, for my palate, it does have a little bit of an acidic flavor to it. Like, like there's an acidic level to it that's similar to what I get from Woodford Reserve products or Old Forester products. And it's not huge, but like the amount of it that I drank this evening, which is what, maybe three or four ounces tops, it builds on me. And that acidic flavor, I don't appreciate. If the, if there wasn't that acidic flavor, it would be way the fuck up there with you, Stephen. But it does have a little bit of an acidic flavor uh, that I that I just that I just don't like. But everything about it, everything else about it, excuse me, is so good that I'm still giving it a, giving it a seven seven. Whereas like a Woodford product or an Old Forester product that isn't nineteen ten or a Woodford double oaked, I would rate much lower than a seven seven um but it's a killer bottle it's a really really killer bottle and one of the nice things about asbury park is like like this particular thing is that this is small batch number three i know that at this very moment they're working on finishing up small batch number four small batch number four is going to be different it is not going to have the exact and not even probably possibly not even the same characteristics at all as this one. But based on this one, I 100% trust Kelly and Bill, whatever the fuck his last name is, (laughs) to put together a killer small batch number four. This has proved to me that they're putting out a fucking killer product, and I'm excited to find out what small batch number four tastes like. So I go 7-7, same things as Steven, except for knocking it for an acidic flavor that I don't appreciate, but that other people might actually prefer. So there you go. I don't I don't get much of that acidity. The more I smell it and drink it, it's oats and honey. For whatever reason lately, I've been eating a lot of oatmeal and I haven't been I haven't really eaten oatmeal in like 15 years, right? For whatever reason. And 
I don't know what, what came over me, but I'm like, man, I, I just feel like I should eat oatmeal now. And every time I smell and drink this, it reminds me of eating breakfast in the morning, not putting too much sugar into the oatmeal. So it's not overly sweet. It's just like the perfect taste. I don't really get that acidity you were talking about, Dan, but I, I do get some of those blueberry notes and, and vanilla, but I, I love that, that oats and honey type feel to it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go an 8.4. That was really solid. Cool. I can, I, again, I can, I can, I, I see an 8.4. I could see really high scores. I can't see, honestly, I can't see many scores lower than mine. Connor, I'm not trying to paint you in a corner here. If you want to go lower, you can, <laughs> but I'm just kind of knock. for some reason, I just get this a little, this acidic flavor that I don't really like. Sorry to interrupt. Connor, Connor. take it as a challenge. Light them the fuck up now. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Absolutely. Please. I like Kelly. I love I Kelly. I like her. She's I like great. her whiskey. Uh, I give it, I was thinking an 8.3. Um, I was kind of, I was almost going to go a little higher. Um, the only thing that's holding it back is the nose uh, undersells the palate. Um, and albeit big old fat disclosure, it's probably because my nose is still like recovering. Um, but the palate absolutely delivers, and it's like with the weather, it finally stopped snowing here in Utah. Uh, this is making me think like porch whiskey in the afternoon, chilling with my dog, uh, going to the baseball game down the street. Like this, I, 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 I don't want to be disrespectful, but like this mixed with like uh so uh, like basically just in a tumbler with a bunch of ice like this like 18 holes on the golf course like i'm excited with this um it's super unique i don't know of another way you have had like this which is it's kind of cool that we're getting to see the twilight of it with small batch four coming um so yeah i give it an 8.3 uh but dan do you have a price point on this uh yeah i think 50 even let me let me double check that's that. solid i know it's just kelly and then her boss like it's just the two correct. of them so this is impressive correct and, and it is it was 50 dollars even it is sold out online um kelly said that you them. can get it at a, at a couple spot like the, they're only physically distributed within new jersey um but whenever they come out with small batch four they will be physically distributed in new jersey and you'll be able to get it at mash and grape i think she said that they were planning like depending on how much they get out of each of the barrels that they're blending maximum of like a thousand bottles yeah. so like this is one of those like situations where it's like limited distro not because it's like allocated but because that that's that's what they got like it's a really really small distillery when connor said a second ago that it's kelly and bill we're talking about through the whole distillery yeah there's a guy that helps out in the gift shop yeah but it's it's a three-person show so anyway there was one day where uh, i'm showing at home uh i got home from work had a beer and i'm watching another bourbon show in my living room on our tv whatever and i'm sitting there watching it it was I think it was the American Honey episode or something. And uh, my fiance Liz comes in and she comes in the door and she like sees the show on the TV and she was like, oh, are, are you are you recording? And I was like, yeah, but it, it, it's cool. Say hi. And she's like, hello. <laughs> and you guys like kept going because it's a video, obviously. And I was like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah she didn't like that too much <laughs> we, had, we had a good long laugh do you think we could pull it off again 
if we like if we were like hey liz like if we just did that randomly and you, in an episode <laughs> and, and you just like timed it you know what i mean like we could we do it right here steven come up with a plan we'll do it next next week <laughs> okay